Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I have a card that was created by Sam Colcott of Mixed Up Craft. And Sam is one of my favorite paper crafters. It's a card which is sure to brighten anyone's day. And it's this. It's called a concertina frame card. When I open it, you'll understand why it's called that. As you see, it has this lovely frame inside, which does fold in a concertina or an accordion style. And in addition to that, it also has this pop-up element here. It's really a delightful, fun full card. And the great thing about it is it's not at all difficult to make. So if you'd like to learn how to make this card and brighten someone's day, then stick with me and I'll show you how. The three pieces of cardstock that you need for this are first of all your card blank, which is a five by seven. So this has been cut at 10 by seven. But if you already have uh, a pre-existing folded card blank, then you can use that, of course. And you need another piece that is cut the same size, so that's 10 by 7. And then you'll need for your panel, which is going to go on the inside, a piece that is cut at 10 by 3 and 3 quarters. So we'll start with the card base, because that is just a matter of scoring it right down the middle at the five inch arc like that so on the ten inch side you're doing that of course and then you just fold and burnish that and that is your card base so that's what's going to be on the outside for the inside you have this piece and for this placing it on the ten inch side Score it at every one inch. So let's start here. So we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then ten is our last one inch mark. Now take this and fold it at the five inch mark which would of course give you the same size card length five by seven except this time you're going to place it in your scoreboard with the folded edge here at the top. I'm just going to use our score lines as a way of marking where we're going to actually be cutting but if you want to do it with a pen and or a pencil and ruler you can do that as well what you want to do on this case is to score it at one and a half inch but only down to the three inch mark here and i'll just put a little tick mark so that we know when we get there so that is our three inch line All right, and we'll do the same over here so that we know when we we've got to that point so as I said follow the one and a half inch groove down to that score line come over and on the five and a half inch do the same thing. So five and a half and come down to that score line. And I'll just rub those little marks out. Okay, and now you need to cut this. You're just going to cut down those two lines that you just made on your scoreboard. But the easiest way to do this really is just to follow along like this. 
this and you can if you want open it and cut down these lines or could just do like I'm going to do here just fold back that score line go back and forth a couple of times you have a very clear guide for where to cut the rest of this off you just go back in with your scissors and follow that score line This is your waist, and this is what you have. It looks like a frame. I guess it is a frame, really. Now, the way to concertina fold this is to have a valley fold at either end. So, your first fold is going to be a valley fold. So, you want it to go inwards. The peak will be on the bottom like that. The next is a mountain fold, so that goes up. Then another valley fold. Just going along like that. And then you have a mountain fold. You can go back and those again in a little bit. So that's your val valley is your next one. Then a mountain. Another valley. Okay. A mountain. here and then your last one is going to be another valley fold and it's these two long valley folds where you're going to attach this to the inside of your card blank so play with this for a minute to get it to remember where it needs to go like that you're kind of making a little fan. Just give that a good press. And you're ready to place it inside of your card bank. That is going to be glued in like this. So you have one side that is going to be attached here. And your other is going to be attached here. Put glue on here. And I would suggest you do use glue because it's going to be your best bet for this lasting, staying together. And with this Kalal glue, it's also going to give it added strength as well. So, I'm just going to marry that right up to the edge of that colored cardstock there. If any hangs over, we can always trim that off. I think that's going to be alright, actually. And also, that glue does give you more time to manipulate the, the cardstock so that you can get it in the right place. So, all important wiggle room. I'm going to do the same on the other side.
place it right along that edge. Lift that up. And then give that a good press as well. Let's give this a moment to dry. And the next thing we'll do is put our inside panel in. So we need to do a little bit of scoring on this piece. Now this was the 10 by 3 and 3 quarters. We're going to score it on this long side, on the 10 inch side, at 2 and 3 quarters, at 5, and at 7 and 1 quarter. Now this one we're going to fold the exact opposite that we did the other piece. We're going to start with a mountain fold then go to a valley and then finish with another mountain. We'll have this either M or W shape, whichever you prefer. Have are these panels which are the two and three quarter inch panels and then you have the smaller ones inside which are Two and a quarter. Yes, two and a quarter inches. So, put your glue on each of these panels and so your valley fold will be going in like this and it's going to fit in here in the center of where that frame is. And you'll see that you have still a little bit of room here where it's not touching the frame. And what you do is you just do one side down first. I'll put that Yeah, like this. Get it in place. Actually, go ahead and give it a press there. And then you want your glue on this side as well. And what you'll do Just fold the card over. And that is going to be secured there. A little of that card base. We'll give that a moment to dry as well. Then when we open this back up. work with this now to get it to the concertina into place like so and after a couple of times it will want to just do this on its own. Got valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, and valley. Thing left now to do is to do the decoration. And for that, I've got various pieces that I've already cut. We could have that on the front, I think. But what we need for here are four pieces that are three quarters by six and three quarters. 
and then you need 12 pieces that are also three quarters by one and a quarter. For the panels inside, you need two that are two by three and a half. And this front is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So when I've got everything ready here to place on the card and what I've done is I took a sheet and just cut it out and numbered it actually on the back so that it would look as though it's one continuous pattern. So this is number one and that was or number 10, this is number 10, it goes like that, number one will go up like that, and got a number nine, just going to go like this, there it is, and this is number two, and then we have all the little pieces in between. So I'm going to go fast forward with this while I get these all in place. There are all the one inch panels covered and if you'd like to do something similar to what I've done here, if you have for example something like this, an image where it's you know, just one solid image rather than a pattern like that where it's not really going to matter you know, where you, you're cutting it, but this would make a difference if you wanted it to keep that image continuously along your panels. What I did was I cut my paper to six and three quarters inches long and then starting at the left side, in my case with my trimmer, I cut three quarter inch strips. So I had ten of them. I numbered them on the back so I would remember uh, in which order I cut them. The first two I left intact, then, and also numbers nine and 10, those were intact. Then for numbers three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, all I did is, if you take, say, something like this, I took my trimmer and cut the top one and a quarter inch off and the bottom one and a quarter inch off and then numbered it. So if this is number two, I would put number two top with an arrow for the direction of the pattern. Same with numbers one, two and nine and ten. I put an arrow showing which way the paper should be oriented, orientated I should say. And then I continued on with three, four, five, etc. And then the middle bit was just scrap bits that I could use for something else. So that's how you would do that. It really was not that difficult. And as you can see, you have this nice little white border along. So it just looks like a, a complete pattern. I love it. Now, we need to decorate in here as well. Now this, as I said, is two by three and a half inches and what I've done is I've cut these coordinating papers to that size which I'm going to put here and I 
chosen is from this creative paper collection, which is full of all sorts of goodies. And what I chose is this. Every day is a new adventure. And I just trimmed it a little bit. And then I'm going to mount it on this little square of American craft cardstock, which is the same as I used for the panel here. I'm going to put that on next. And by the way, the, um, the papers, the sunflower papers are from, and also the, uh, the ones with the uh, spots are from Debbie Moore. This was a free digital download. I don't know if it's still available free, but uh, I would encourage you to go over to her website. You can find all kinds of goodies. And I'll try to leave a link in the description box below. So let's get this down next. For this side, I have some other little cutouts, which came from, again, this same download. I've got the little sunflowers, which I thought might be nice, just placed like that. these little butterflies which I cut out on my scan and cut and I actually just scanned it and cut in the side of the pattern a bit and just took the little antennas off because I think they were very delicate so I didn't want those getting damaged so I'm going to put those on here a couple of these. It's all very well coordinated. So that's the beauty of when you get these collections. A lot of the work is being done for you. So for the outside, as I showed you before, I've got this piece that has been cut to the six and three quarters by four and three quarters. So it just leaves that little bit of a border showing from the card underneath. And I've cut that at six and a half so that I can have those just coming down the side like that. Let's do that first. There's the front of the card completed. And then, as you see inside here, what you do is just pop those out so that 
when the recipient gets it, it will already be like that. And then it's just a matter of them opening it out. So you could have it completely concertinaed or even just partially. And then they can display it however they like. Isn't that lovely? So that is the concertina frame card. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and be sure that you are hitting the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. As always, please stay safe and crafty hugs. Bye.